Hello everyone, this is Sam Spade and welcome to another Coding Fundamentals and GML tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be talking about variable scope. Variable scope refers to the place where you can validly reference a variable. It is what allows us to have multiple variables with the same name. Another way to think of this concept is with the following example. Let's say you have three enemies, each of which have a health variable. If I say reduce health by one, which enemy does that refer to? Without more context, it's impossible to know. However, if we know the code is running from this enemy right here, then reduce health by one would refer to this health. If the code is running in this enemy, then reduce health by one would refer to this enemy's health, and so on. Scope determines which variable name goes with which variable. It's probably still a little unclear, but don't worry, we'll have a lot more examples coming up. Before we get to those examples, let's talk about the three types of scope that GameMaker Studio 2 allows. They are global, instance, and local. We're going to go through each type, and for each type, we're going to talk about how it is created, who has access to it, or what its scope is, when it is destroyed, and some basic uses for it. First up, we have global scope. Global scope is created with a special declaration. The special declaration is this global dot. You put global dot before the variable name, and that will make the variable global in scope. Once a global variable is created, any instance, script, event, any code in GameMaker Studio 2 can reference and change that global. They can use it, they can reference it, they can change it. After a global variable is created, it remains in memory until the game ends. In general, then, you will want to create global variables only when you have multiple objects that need to refer to the same information and there only needs to be one type of that information out there at any given time. Examples might include a global music volume, the save file that you're using, and so on. Next, we have instance scope. Instance scope variables are created within an instance of an object. If you watch the variable basics tutorial, all of the variables that we were creating there are instance variables. Instance variables are the most common and they have no special declaration. Instance variables are unique to that instance. So you can have multiple instances of the same object or even multiple instances of different objects that have the same variables. For example, built into GameMaker Studio 2, every object has an identification and an X and a Y position. And those variables are unique to that instance. Once instance variables are created, they exist for as long as that instance exists and are destroyed when that instance is destroyed. Code running inside of that instance can access that variable normally. If code inside of one instance wants to reference an instance variable from another instance, they can do so, but you have to go through extra steps. We'll talk about that in a different tutorial, but the takeaway right now is an instance variable can be accessed normally inside of an instance. And if you want to access an instance variable from another instance, you have to jump through extra hoops. Finally, we have local scope. Local scope variables are created for a specific event or script and are destroyed as soon as that script or event is finished. They also have a special declaration. That declaration is the keyword var. You say var variable name equals whatever the data you want it to be is. You can see that I used underscores before the names. This is not required. It is simply a convention. It's a convention that I normally use with my local variables to further help remind myself that they are local variables and cannot be referenced outside of that script or event. But it is purely a convention. There's no requirement to do this. Local variables are great for any type of information that needs to be created or held onto for a certain event but isn't needed anywhere else. They help save on memory and keep your code clean and easier to debug. Here we have the chart all put together. Up here, we have global variables. These variables, you can see, can be referenced by any instance or any script. Next, we have instance variables. These instance variables apply within their instance. And again, remember, this instance could reference this instance variables, but they'd have to jump through extra steps. Finally, we have local variables. Local variables exist only in that script or event and are discarded when the script or event is done. Now let's switch over to GameMaker Studio 2 and see this in action. We have a room with four objects. We have three object Bs 
and all they have is a square sprite attached to them. We'll run through their code in a moment. And then we have object A up here. Object A is simply going to create some variables, global color, global size, and it's going to, if you're not familiar with the choose function, it's simply going to choose from one of these options and assign that to that variable. And it will do that whenever I push enter. Object B is going to have a rotation, and then we're going to assign that rotation to image angle. And I'm doing this uh, purely because it will make it easier to debug. Whenever we push space, it's going to update its size based upon global size and its color based upon global color. And whenever we push shift, it's going to update its rotation. Okay, so I've skipped forward to the project being compiled. I set a breakpoint here, but we can see the global variables get created over here. Note that they're over here. Next, we can look at the... Check these out. All right, there we go. So next we can look at the instance variables over here. So we have three instances of object B, each with their own local rotation variable, or sorry, not local, each with their own instance rotation variable. We can update those variables by pushing shift and you'll see that they'll change. Every variable is called the same, but when the code inside that object runs, it knows that rotation refers to that instance's rotation and it updates that variable. We can also push enter and we should see the global variables over here change, right? Color stayed the same, but size was slightly different. Now, if we update our spaces, oh, I forgot I put a breakpoint here. So we're gonna update these squares, but we're gonna step through it in code. So global size will be saved to a temporary variable. Now, this is actually completely unnecessary. I could have just put global size here and here. I just did this to show that in the debugger, size is gonna get created, it's gonna get, it's gonna be used. And then as soon as we start running this again, it's going to be destroyed. It no longer exists. And you can see that the squares have updated their size. The color is still the same, but they've updated their size. And if we randomize the color and size a little bit, there we go. There we go. You can see that they're all pulling from the same global variables. So in summary, variables have scope. That scope determines where it is legal and valid to reference a variable. And the three levels of scope in GameMaker Studio 2 are instance, local, and global. As always, the links in this slide will be below, along with links to the source code and the slides themselves. That's it. Thanks for watching.